the Matterhorn, rising more than 14,000 feet, an icon of the Alps. And in its shadow, we find the beginnings of the legend of Sepp Blatter. When Forbes magazine last fall published its list of the most powerful people on the planet, Barack Obama, Vladimir Putin, Pope Francis, they all made the cut. But there was only one figure on the list from the world of sports. That was Sepp Blatter. Blatter grew up far from the corridors of power here in Visp, a medieval Swiss village, where for hundreds of years, generations of Blatters had lived more or less quietly. Hier in Fies bist er einfach der Sepp. Äh, er läuft hier in Fies frei herum, wie jede äh, natürliche Person auch. Er ist sehr gesprächig. Er quatscht oder redet mit allen Leuten. For more than 40 years, Blatter has been coming to Joseph Schwartz's bakery. The specialty of the house was created specifically in his honor, FIFA bread. Und dann haben wir eben obendrauf diese Obladen, dass das aussieht wie ein Ball und in der Mitte drin das FIFA-Zeichen. Ist eigentlich ein einfaches Brot, aber ein sehr gutes. Life in this thousand-year-old village is also simple. It's small, it's tiny. Some people, they like to be king in a village and some of them, they want to become bigger in a, in a town or in a city or in a nation. And Seplot is definitely the, the second case. Bruno Offentronger is the author of the only full-scale biography of Blatter, Sepp, king of the football world. He was born in a family which was, uh, let's say, they were not rich. They had not a lot of money. I wouldn't say they were poor. I think that's a legend. Well, not, not poor, but not a lot of money. The oldest of four children, Sepp was cared for at home by his mother. His father worked long hours at the local chemical plant. It was during young Sepp's time at this elementary school, which now bears his name, that he discovered his life's passion. I was football mad as a boy. I still am. I played whenever and wherever I could kicking a ball against the ball if there was nobody else to play with. I wasn't so bad either. He was a uh, forward. People told me that he was um, very quick. He didn't want to pass the ball. He wanted to score by himself. Et puis on gagnait uh, en général parce que Sepp marquait énormément de buts. Je me souviens parfaitement d'un match contre les juniors de Massonger où Sepp a marqué 8 buts et nous avons gagné 14 à 0. Antoine Chope was a teammate of Bladder's. He's known him for 70 years. Sa première, la toute première qualité qui vous, euh, vous impressionne toujours, c'est le charme. Je n'ai pas connu un être aussi charmant que lui. As a teenager, Blatter would leave Visp to attend boarding school and later college. But soccer was his dream. I was offered at that time a professional contract by a club. I needed the signature of my father on the contract. And he refused to sign the contract, can you imagine? He took this contract My son, he said, you will never earn your living in football. <laughs> Instead, Blatter spent time as a bellhop, as an army colonel, as a wedding singer. Did he have a good voice? He can sing, yes, he has a good voice. And even as a sports writer at the biggest local paper, Le Nouveliste. Oui, il est, il est évident que le garçon étant euh, sérieux et intelligent, ambitieux notamment. Jean-Pierre Baller was Blatter's editor. Oui, il est bien clair que lorsqu'il était correspondant 
Euh, il n'avait pas l'ambition de devenir journaliste, certainement pas. Lui, euh, il, voyait, il voyait, disons, son avenir différemment. In 1964, he went to work at the Swiss Hockey Federation. Soon, he was in charge. But his big break came in 1975, when he was hired by the financially strapped organization that governed world soccer, FIFA. Blatter was one of only 12 employees. That changed his life completely because he has a mission then the mission to, to develop football and to raise the money, let's say, to start to sell football as an asset. And he did. Together with then FIFA president Jao Havelange, Blatter helped turn FIFA into a cash cow, selling TV and marketing rights for millions of dollars, all amid allegations of corruption. What did Havelange see in Bladder? A lieutenant. A good, loyal lieutenant. By 1998, after 24 years in office, Havelange announced he was stepping down. It was Bladder's chance to go for the top job. His opponent would be Leonard Johansson of Sweden, who promised to make FIFA more transparent. What was at stake for FIFA in 1998? The choice was a stark choice there, represented by Blatter as the candidate of continuity against the European president, Leonard Johansson, as the reform candidate. That's what was at stake. Alan Tomlinson has been researching and writing about FIFA for 30 years. He was in Paris on June 8, 1998, for the election. There were reports that classic envelopes of cash were, were, were going under doors in the hotel in, in Montparnasse. Monsieur Joseph Blatter, 111. Monsieur Lennart Johansson, 80. Merci, merci de m'avoir élu à la présidence de la FIFA. Merci beaucoup. I was surprised, disappointed when I had to face facts. I heard rumors of what happened in the corridors before the election. These are rumors. Something happened that was not fair. There are too many people whom I trust who told me what went on. And it hurts. The age of Sepp Blatter had begun. 